Third game of the triple header on CBS, the network of stars. Speaking of stars, Maryland celebrating its 2002 national championship team, their only national championship in program history 20 years later. This year's squad, not championship caliber, led by interim head coach Danny Manning. But they played like a championship team early on against Ohio State, a team that Jerry Palm has as a four seed in the tournament, led by one of their best players in Eric Ayala. The Terps off to a strong start. Ayala bounce back game Thursday against Indiana, had three points on one of seven. First half against Ohio State on Sunday, 13 points on five of nine. Had a stretch where he scored 11 of Maryland's 13 points. Terps only led for 29 seconds in the first meeting this season. Led for the final eight minutes of the first half in this one. Second half, Quadus Wahab with the big old block. Get it out. Later in the second, the Rhode Island transfer. Fats Russell for three. Maryland by six. More from him in a moment. But a concerning moment for the Buckeyes with just over seven to play. Ayala drives to the bucket. Zed Key blocks the shot, called for the foul, but Key is down on the play. Key lands on the foot of a Maryland player. You see it right there, rolls the ankle, leaves the game with a right ankle injury, did not return. He's one of the Buckeyes' best players. Just over six minutes left. Ayala, no. Offensive rebound tipped out to Fats Russell. I get buckets. Then two minutes later, Ayala from the wing, off balance, got it. Maryland up 11, their largest lead of the game. Chris Holtman's like, I need a timeout. We need to talk about this. Ayala, 23 points in this one. Consider he had 18 points combined in the previous three games. Under three to play. Fats Russell, step back, buries it. Russell goes for 27 points, 6 to 10 from beyond the arc. Fats Russell with a season high. And Maryland gets a thick win against Ohio State, 75-60 on the day they honor the only national championship team in school history. Maryland lost the first meeting of the season against Ohio State by 15, won this one by 15 as Maryland snaps a three-game losing streak to the Buckeyes. Didn't even need the points, but it was Maryland plus the points. Game goes under the total of 141 and a hook in College Park. Kind of been the theme this weekend. There he is. He's back. It's chaos, right? CBS Sports HQ <laughs> college basketball analyst Matt Norlander. Your reaction here, another ranked team goes on the road, and in your words, roadkill. Ranked team is roadkill weekend. No doubt about it. Ohio State will probably fall out of the polls when they refresh on Monday, Hakeem. Uh, let me first talk about Maryland, though. You saw Fats Russell, Eric Ayala combined for 50 of Maryland's 75 points. Uh, Fats Russell has been tremendous over the better part of a month, month plus now overall. But it was nice to see those two players specifically who were ranked inside the top 60 of our top 101 players back in the preseason and the Maryland kind of fell off but at their best yeah they're high-end talents and I just thought this was a great day for Maryland's program and its players sub 500 they're going through this coaching transition you know that search hasn't even truly started in earnest yet so who's to say what person will wind up getting that job in two three four weeks you come and honor the 2002 championship team 20 years later. You know, you get them in the building, and as you well know, Hakeem, be it in college basketball, college football, sometimes when you honor the title team, you get them the rings at the pro level. You don't always get a result to reflect the ceremonial nature of doing those things. Sometimes it's, you know, it's a, a bit uncomfortable. You have this big honoring of a former player or a team or a coach, and then the team that's actually on the field or the court goes out and loses. Maryland didn't have that. I thought that was really good, really special. This this program, that fan base, they were owed what they got on Sunday. You're obviously correct. They're sub-500. They got to win the Big Ten tournament, which they're almost certainly not going to do to even get in the NCAA tournament. But to see Fats Russell and Eric Ayala particularly ball out the way they did, and it was a basically a, a near-wire-to-wire -wire victory. That was, uh, that was good stuff for Maryland as it just tries to get a little bit of right footing and momentum to maybe make a little bit of noise in the Big Ten tournament a week and a half from now. What went wrong for Ohio State, considering they just came off this big win against Illinois earlier this week, and then they come and land egg on the road at Maryland? Well, you had Malachi Branham, who had a couple of nice spots here and there. He's been the outstanding freshman that's played really well in the past few weeks. He came back a little bit, which is understandable. That's not necessarily a surprise. 
Uh, they didn't shoot well. Zed Key went down at one point uh, with what looked like an ankle injury overall. Um, so they just they just didn't have it. I mean, it, it, you saw a few flashes of Chris Holtman on the sideline there in the second half, and I can almost just see it in his eyes. He just kind of, he was he was fuming just a little bit because his team normally doesn't. Ohio State normally doesn't allow the opponent, even in a road environment, an inferior opponent, to really pull away from him and outplay him the way they did. He will uh, he will have. A, <laughs> He'll talk to his team. He'll try and get them shaped up here. So they, did, they didn't shoot well. Again, though, it is, it's matching the theme of the weekend. Now, Maryland's not as good as the likes of the teams that won over ranked opponents, many of them being ranked on Saturday. But we just saw it, you know, all over the place this weekend. And Ohio State just happened to be the, uh, the latest team that took the loss. Look, I know you like to look at a lot of numbers. You certainly look at the net. You certainly look at Ken Palm. You certainly look at RPI. Maybe you're not. Maybe not. You don't like, care as much as, uh, as Chris Hassel does. But I know you want to look at these teams and evaluate them for their body of, the work, a body of work that they've done this season. But do you look at Ohio State, and, and does this change your opinion at all? Or do you say, hmm, there's a little bit of a concern that Ohio State goes on the road and loses to Maryland? I have... Zero concern with the way Ohio State played on Sunday and it losing. This was the final road game of the season for the Buckeyes. They're going to close out with three consecutive home games, including two against the Michigan schools. I could easily, easily see Ohio State, who has a first-team All-American level talent in E.J. Liddell, peeling off three straight wins to close out the regular season, doing fine by its resume, still staying in that five-seed conversation overall. But from a big-picture perspective, you're right. I do pay attention to net Ken Palm strength the record, which is it has no predictive value. It's completely reflective on what you've done. The interesting thing with Ohio State, and we mentioned this on the Friday episode of the Ion College Basketball Podcast, is Ohio State has a narrower definition of what kind of team it is among all the six team sheet metrics than basically any other team that's in that conversation for a, a one, two, three, four, five, six seed uh, heading into the weekend. Ohio State was just floating between, you know, that 14 to 17, 18 range. It went, no matter if you were talking Ken Palm, Sagarin, KPI, Net, Strength of Record, BPI, any of them. So, no, I don't have a lot of concern at this point with the loss. So, Maryland was actually a Q2 loss here. So, now Ohio State is 5-5 five and five in Quad 1. They're 4-3 and three in Quad 2. And then they've got nine total wins and no losses in the two quadrants that you, you know, can't ever take losses or otherwise it's just going to kill your seed. So, they're still okay. And I still think that they're going to be fine when we get to the NCAA tournament. They're not going to be a one, two, or three seed. To be a four, probably got to make a run to the Big Ten tournament. But I still think this team's capable. With EJ Liddell, Hakeem, they're capable of a lot of things. And I still maintain that this, uh, this, this team will show better in this year's NCAA tournament than the one last year when it was a two seed and it got knocked out by 15 seeded Oral Roberts. I think we are going to look up and for sure, I mean, I would, I would be genuinely surprised. I think that Ohio State minimally is playing in the second round of the NCAA tournament this year. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.